Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a simple, straightforward, effective skincare routine for clearing out blackheads, whiteheads, acne breakouts, and for rosacea and that really stubborn cousin of rosacea, perioral dermatitis. This is a really easy routine anybody can do. It doesn't require a lot of advanced thinking, planning, layering. Give this video a thumbs up if you like simple, straightforward, no-nonsense skincare routines that don't require like a lot of advanced thinking, planning, tons of products cluttering your shelves. I'm gonna be using one of my favorite ingredients. It's very underrated. It's sulfur in the De La Cruz Maximum Strength Acne Treatment. This is a 10% sulfur mask. I'm gonna show you how to use it. And while I do it, I'm gonna explain how it works, what the benefits are, and what to expect. You wanna get started by first washing your face. You can just use a mild, gentle cleanser. I'm using this one by Neutrogena, a favorite of mine, the Hydro Boost with Hyaluronic Acid Hydrating Gel Cleanser, fragrance free. Importantly, when you wash your face, always make sure to use lukewarm to cool water. Using really hot water, not only can dry out the skin, but it actually can be really aggravating to conditions like rosacea and perioral dermatitis. You wanna make sure to pat dry the skin. If your skin is soaking wet, this product is probably not gonna set up as well. Now that my skin is clean and there's no water residue left on the surface, this product is gonna go on a lot more evenly, a lot more smoothly. To use this, you just need about a pearl sized amount. And you're gonna apply a thin film to the face. Now I'm gonna put it to my entire face, sparing around my eyes. Common mistake people make when it comes to skincare is putting on a big glob. All you really need is a very thin film of this. It has a very moisturizing texture. Make sure to get my nose. Cheek area. So as soon as you've applied this in a thin film to the entire face, sparing the area around your eyes, you're gonna set a timer for anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. I'll go ahead and do 15. While the timer's going, we're gonna talk about what exactly this is doing, what it's helpful for, what to expect, and sulfur. Why would you wanna use that in a skincare routine? It has a lot of benefits for the skin. If you weren't aware, it's anti-inflammatory and it's antimicrobial. It can help reduce the acne-causing bacteria, cutibacterium acnes, and it can also help control certain microbes on the skin surface that can aggravate conditions like rosacea. Your skin has these little mites. Hello. Kind of freaks people out. They're called demodex mites. But in rosacea, part of the skin problem where you get these inflamed red spots is thought to be due to an abnormal response to those little mites and sulfur can actually help with that. Sulfur is also comedolytic, meaning it basically unclogs pores. It does this because the sulfur is thought to interact with cysteine, the amino acid, and the keratins in your skin, helping to basically break up the glue between cells that are kind of stuck together in your pore. The benefit of doing that is unclogging pores. So you can see an improvement in blackheads and whiteheads, otherwise known as open and closed comedones. So for example, if you get a lot of comedones on your forehead, this may help you out. If you get a lot of blackheads on your nose, this is something to consider. Because sulfur is both anti-inflammatory and because it can help reduce the burden of the acne-causing bacterium, cutibacterium acnes, this can be a particularly valuable mask to consider incorporating into your skincare routine if you have acne. Whether it be acne that is predominantly hormonal, maybe predominantly localized to the jawline, maybe you have comedonal acne that's aggravated by hair styling products on your forehead and you're trying to clear that up, or maybe you have acne on your body, like your chest or your back, you don't have to just do this to the face. This product can help with those things. Sulfur is really underrated by and large. Some of the things I really like about sulfur and this mask in particular are that it's pretty easy to tolerate. It's very gentle on the skin. I mean, it's well tolerated by people who have the sensitive skin condition rosacea. I also like that this product can be used alongside other treatments. What we're doing here in this routine is essentially a form of short contact therapy. What is short contact therapy? Essentially what it sounds like. Putting an active ingredient on the skin, leaving it there for a defined period of time, and then rinsing it off. The advantages of short contact therapy are that you get the ingredient on the skin, you derive the benefits, but you minimize any side effects of dryness. 
that's what we're doing here. I've got a lot of videos talking about short contact therapy on this channel, whether it be with tretinoin or other acne ingredients like benzoyl peroxide. So check those out. But today we are basically doing a form of short contact therapy. In contrast to some of those other active ingredients that we've talked about with short contact therapy though, I want to emphasize that sulfur is pretty gentle on the skin. It's actually kind of soothing. The main side effects of using the sulfur mask are it can be drying, some people find their skin itches when they use it, and probably the thing that bothers people the most is the odor. Some people find that it smells like rotting eggs, other people note that it smells like a match head, basically the smell of sulfur. Now we're going to rinse this off the skin surface. In my opinion, I don't smell any residual sulfur odor using this product after I rinse it off, but I have gotten comments over the years from people who are like, I use that and every time I use it, my husband or partner, they tell me that my face smells like eggs. So just a word of warning, it can leave a foul odor on the skin surface that a lot of people don't care for. But as I mentioned, you can use it alongside other active ingredients. It doesn't counteract other active ingredients. And because it's relatively gentle overall, I mean, it may be a little drying, but overall it's pretty gentle. You can use it alongside other active ingredients for either acne, rosacea, perioral dermatitis. For example, in the case of acne, you could use this mask, rinse it off as we're gonna do in a moment, and you'll see, see me do that. You can rinse it off and then you can use your other acne treatments, whether it be benzoyl peroxide, tretinoin, azelaic acid, um, topical dapsone. You can also use treatments for rosacea along with this, whether it be topical ivermectin, which is sold by the brand name Cilantro, or topical metronidazole. This is not gonna get in the way of that. It's gentle enough that you can actually do this on a daily basis. Comment below, have you ever dealt with a bout of perioral dermatitis, otherwise known as periorificial dermatitis? It can be very frustrating and uncomfortable. As the name implies, often involves the skin around the mouth, although it can involve the skin around the nose and around the eyes. Periorificial dermatitis is notoriously difficult to tackle head on and majority of skincare products actually end up irritating that condition, but sulfur is something that is prudent to consider in the routine to address that condition. Again, it is thought to be related to rosacea. The anti-inflammatory properties of sulfur are what is thought to be responsible for improvement in perioral dermatitis with sulfur. So in summary, benefits that you might observe with a product like this are fewer breakouts, fewer blackheads, fewer whiteheads. In the case of rosacea, fewer papules, which are those red bumps, fewer pustules, which are those white pus-filled bumps. Similarly, with periorificial dermatitis, you may note improvement in the number of red bumps that you get with that condition and an overall just improvement in the sensitivity that you experience with those little bumps. If you've ever had that, again, those bumps, they can sting and be really uncomfortable. What if you don't have acne, rosacea, or periorificial dermatitis? Can this still be helpful? Certainly can. Its comedolytic properties can help improve the appearance of pores. Does this have any anti-aging properties to it? No, there's nothing about this that combats skin aging. How often can you do this mask? You can do it as often as you tolerate it. You actually can do it on a daily basis, either as part of your morning skincare routine or part of your evening skincare routine. And truthfully, if you're motivated, you can do it two to three times a day as tolerated. So what I suggest is that try using it once a day for the first couple of weeks, see how you do with it. If it's too drying, maybe go to using it every other day. But if you tolerate it fine, consider increasing it to using it twice a day. By increasing the number of times a day that you use it, you may note that you get a faster onset of improvement of things like red bumps, pustules, blackheads, and whiteheads. Again, everything in the skin takes time, but by increasing the frequency as tolerated, you may know that you get to those results faster than doing it at a more conservative pace. Now, if you'll recall from my video on short contact therapy, one of the things I really like about it is that it gives the individual a lot of control in tweaking the duration of contact. You can start out really conservative, leaving this on the skin surface for 10 minutes, and then increase the duration of contact. You may find that initially you only tolerate wearing it for 10 minutes and that it's too dry, but with time, you are able to tolerate it better, outwards to 15 and 20 minutes. And then again, increasing from just using it once a day, a few times a week, to daily, to twice a day. I mean, really, it's going to be something that you can guide. People who have drier skin, maybe are more sensitive, those 
that tend to be more on the rosacea side of things, they may find they have to be more conservative. Whereas people who have a really inflamed acne, they may find that they need to be a bit more aggressive and use it more frequently. The spots of acne, they can be quite thickened and so the penetration of this can be a little slow in those areas. So by using it more frequently, you may get to the end point that you're looking for faster. Okay, now that the 15 minutes are up, I'm gonna rinse this off the skin surface. Something really nice about this product is you don't need to use cleanser to rinse it off the skin. It's water soluble, meaning it'll come off with water. Now you certainly can use a gentle cleanser if you find that that works for you. I would suggest though, just using water because the more times you wash your face with the cleanser, that can end up drying out your skin too much. And as I said, sulfur can be a little drying to begin with. And again, cool to lukewarm water. We're not gonna go boil in the stratum corneum here. All right, so now that I've rinsed that off, we're gonna come in with the final step of this very simple, straightforward routine, and that is to apply a moisturizer if this is part of your evening routine or a moisturizing sunscreen if this is part of your daytime routine. Doesn't matter what the product is, so long as you like it and it doesn't bother your skin. I am using the Hatamuji Skin Conditioning Gel by Naturi. This is a really lightweight hydrating gel. It's beneficial in that it's going to replenish the moisture that I lost from washing my face, and it's going to help keep the skin barrier protected and hydrated to minimize any potential drying side effects from the sulfur mask. With moisturizer, you only need a nickel to dime sized amount. Again, you don't need a big glob on there. Of course, it's going to depend a bit on the consistency of the moisturizer that you're using. So you can always add a little bit more if you feel that you need to, but you don't need to go on in with a big glob from the get-go. It just will end up wasting things. Now, if I were doing this as part of my morning routine, I would pat dry the skin completely and I would come in with a moisturizing sunscreen. If you guys missed my video on the Pure Screen Plus Mineral Tinted Sunscreens from Neutrogena, definitely check those out. But these would be a great option if you have, especially if you have very sensitive skin, they're mineral sunscreens, so less likely to sting and burn in comparison to the all chemical sunscreens. And you have four different shades to choose from there. So that would be a great option. Okay, where do you get this De La Cruz Sulfur Ointment? You can get it a lot of places. It can be a little hard to find because they sometimes put it like down at the bottom shelf, but you can buy it at Walmart. You can buy it at Kroger grocery stores I've seen, uh, Target. You can also get it at like Walgreens, Rite Aid, CVS, or you can get it on the Amazonian. <laughs> so it's pretty inexpensive and you don't need a lot of this. You also, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you could also use this product to like the chest, the back, anywhere where you have breakouts, this could be used and it can be helpful. It can be used under the arms too if you find that you get painful breakouts there, maybe related to hydroadenitis. You may find that this is beneficial in those areas. It can be very soothing and anti-inflammatory. Can this product be used if you are pregnant? Always discuss that with your treating healthcare provider, but by and large, sulfur is considered to be safe to use in pregnancy. Can you use a sulfur mask if you are allergic to sulfa, S-U-L-F-A? The answer is yes. Sulfur is not the same as sulfa. Sulfa is a class of antibiotics that some people are allergic to, but this does not cross react with that. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I really hope that this was helpful to you guys. Straightforward, effective, three-step routine for acne, rosacea, perioral dermatitis. Really anyone could benefit from this routine if you're looking to incorporate sulfur in for its anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial benefits. Um, now on the end slide, I'm going to link my video on how to do short contact therapy with benzoyl peroxide. It's a great way to use benzoyl peroxide for your acne, derive the benefits of that ingredient, but minimize the drying effects. Benzoyl peroxide in contrast to sulfur can be a lot more drying and irritating. So watch that one next, especially if you're coping with acne breakouts. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.